Hey guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and today we're going to be looking at Grumpjaw, the new hero in Vainglory. Now, Grumpjaw is an interesting addition to the Halcyon Fold. I think he works a little bit like Alpha, and I've tested out both his weapon power and his crystal power build paths, as well as his potential role as a captain, and I'm going to give you my initial thoughts in this guide. I will probably do a guide that is different to this later on, but I wanted to get a guide out there so that you guys had some sort of direction when playing this new hero. Now let's look at Grumpjaw's abilities, because we always start with abilities in my guides, and Grumpjaw is a new hero, we'll spend a little bit longer on these specifically. Now his heroic perk is called Living Armor. It grants you 5 stacks of 10 armor and 10 shield, giving you up to 50 armor and 50 shield just based on his heroic perk, which is pretty insane if you ask me. He gains stacks every 5 seconds, or on every basic attack, and you actually lose them while taking damage from an enemy, for every one second but realistically in the middle of a team fight you'll be basic attacking you'll be um, trying to deal damage so you'll actually be able to maintain four to five stacks pretty comfortably in a team fight i would wager now his a ability is his major gap closing ability he dashes a short distance and just before his target location he'll stop swing his tusks and he'll deal damage and a 55 percent slow to the targets that he manages to hit it deals extra damage based on your stacks of living armor so a little bit like alpha you want to make sure that you have five stacks before engaging although that is really not difficult to achieve so i wouldn't worry too much about that you'll gain five stacks naturally anyway it has only got crystal power ratio scaling and it has a 50 percent ratio on the initial impact and 10% ratio on the extra stack damage meaning that if you have five stacks and you've got it overdriven it does a lot of damage and speaking of overdrive overdriving this ability significantly increases the damage and slightly reduces the cooldown so I would 100% recommend this if you're going to build the CP grump jaw this is what you'll want to try and overdrive his B ability is called hangry I'm going to try and not cringe every time I say that and it is a small gap closing ability kind of just within your basic attack range now when you use it you'll deal a little bit of damage on impact but then you'll get a buff for four seconds that increases your attack speed significantly and grants you bonus weapon damage for that period so you can see why this would work very nicely with a weapon power grump jaw build it's a little bit like Ringo's Twirling Silver in the sense that it grants you the attack speed, but it also has an 80% crystal ratio on the attack damage bonus that you get. So if you build the crystal power ratio, you'll actually get crystal damage on basic attack as well as the extra bonus weapon power damage. Overdriving it increases the duration by one second to five seconds, and it gives you a fairly big increase in attack speed and another minor increase in attack damage as well. Although uh, this is good for the weapon power build, I wouldn't totally recommend it for the crystal power build. Now his C ability is called Stuffed, and it's another gap closing ability that will eat the enemy for 3 seconds. By eating the enemy, you essentially stun them, preventing them from using items and any abilities. Pretty good if you ask me. Now the enemy is released after 3 seconds in the target direction that you're facing, or if you reactivate the ability, or if you are stunned or killed. All of those parameters will release the enemy. It does huge damage, 700 at level 3, and has a 200% crystal ratio on that impact damage. The cooldown is also very, very short and is reduced per level. It's 40 seconds at max rank, by the way, so, I mean, that's a really short cooldown for such a high impact ability, especially with the massive crystal power ratio it has. I, I think of it a little bit like an alpha ultimate and how impactful it can be to a single target if you manage to land it on them, so uh, it's, it's honestly really, really strong in the crystal power build path. So speaking of the crystal power build path, let's have a look at Grump Jaw's build. Now for CP, I would suggest this line of skills. I would take B first, it gives me better level 1 dueling, it gives me a better jungle clear at level 1, helps me get through those early levels, and then I would max A as soon as possible to reduce the cooldown and give me huge damage output when I get a little bit more crystal power behind my abilities. Then I max C over B just because the insane damage that it provides and the cooldown reduction. You don't really need B for damage as crystal power. You always get that 80% scaling. It's the same at every level. And the attack speed doesn't make too much difference if you're not building attack speed anyway. So when I start with Grump Jaw in the jungle, I start with a Weapon Blade, a Crystal Bit, and a Halcyon Potion. This is really good for my B ability. I get early scaling with the Crystal Bit. I get extra damage, obviously, with the attack speed that my Hangry, I've got to cringe every time I say that, provides me. And it gives me a really good dual potential, especially when I've got five stacks. The Crystal Bit gives me a little bit of scaling behind my A ability, which means I can dual a little bit more easily and ganks are a little bit more impactful. Now I've changed the way that that I show the um, 
full build paths, by the way, guys, so you can still see the gameplay when I'm talking about it. The core build for me is very similar to CP Alpha. It's Aftershock and Broken Myth because you use your abilities, you can get Aftershock procs very easily, and then Broken Myth stacks you can build quite frequently as well because you're dealing crystal power damage with your B every time you basic attack, so it's quite easy to build Broken Myth stacks. And then you build around those two items, very similar to how you would build a CP Alpha, the Atlas Pauldrons, the Aegis for the defense. Then I've considered the Halcyon Charge and maybe a clockwork. Now this is actually quite a lot of energy regeneration and maybe too much energy regeneration. You do use a lot of energy as a grump jaw at the high levels, but this is probably too much. So I could then, if I'm going to go clockwork, think about subbing out the Halcyon Chargers for journey boots, which then gives me a little bit of extra movement speed. It means I can chase people down more frequently because A, the A ability on grump jaw is actually quite hard to hit. So having the journey boots as a backup actually really helps. So um, this is a good build path. I would consider this as probably a, an optimal build path for Grump Jaw. Uh, I could also think about getting rid of the Clockwork and going Eve of Harvest, especially when you've got such high damage on your ultimate, um, and especially with your resistances. Any regeneration that you pr can provide for yourself with Eve of Harvest is going to be infinitely more useful. The way that Fortified Health and Regeneration works, it's go always going to be more impactful the more resistances you have, because it's harder then to burst you through that because you have the resistances. If you gain more health back with the resistances of your passive grump jaw is going to be harder to take down now again with the cp grump jaw build there's loads of additions and changes that you can make switch those journey boots back out for halcyon chargers add in a shatter glass if you're dealing with squishy targets this gives you more burst on your a gives you more burst on your c really really good against things like taka really good against things like the ringo that you just want to try and blow up in one go and again this kind of is, is something that additions that you can make depending on who you're playing against remember your item build should be dynamic and that's kind of what this is by adding in the shatter glass it makes it more dynamic another build path that I've been thinking about kind of playing on the uh, B ability playing on your hangry and the CP damage that it gives you is using alternating current and then you you know you, you get the journey boots you add the clockwork in afterwards for the sustain and the cooldown to get hangry off cooldown more often and there are changes that you can make here you can take out the cooldown reduction and add the eve of harvest for the sustain so you get a little bit of sustain on your basic attacks and when you land your ultimate and land your A ability you'll get the sustain built in through that as well or you can change it up completely and add a shatter glass at the end giving you a little bit more burst damage and having the halcyon charges as your sustain so again loads of different changes that you can make with this build the core being the alternating current and the broken myth and kind of then it's up to you after getting your defensive items what to play around with as with all of my builds guides atlas pauldrons can be replaced by uh, full metal jacket but realistically i would say that atlas pauldrons based on the fact that grump can close gaps very easily is probably going to be better for you in the long run if you build Grump Jaw CP, I believe you're supposed to play it a little bit like CP Alpha. You have to hit your A ability to deal damage, and then you have your ultimate to either blow someone up or take someone out of the team fight, dealing significant damage to them while your team can clean up the rest of them. I'm going to talk about use of Grump Jaw's ultimate later on in the tips and tricks section, but if you're looking for a playstyle and you've played Alpha before, think of CP Grump Jaw a little bit in the same way. Hit your A ability on a squishy target if possible. Um, you have the sustained damage in a team fight coming from your B, and then use your ultimate to either blow someone up or take out a key target. Now, let's move on to Weapon Power Grump Jaw, which is another one of the Grump Jaw potential build paths. Um, this is a little bit more simple. You take B first and you max B first. It's the only ability that synergizes with weapon power in Grump Jaw's build. And it gives you huge amounts of burst once you overdrive it, especially if you've got a Sorrow Blade behind you as well as that flat damage. Now... The controversy here is going to be the maxing of A over the maxing of C. And I want to talk about the maths behind this because there are maths that back up my theory here. Maxing A over C gives you actually a net 100 damage increase with no crystal power built. Uh, it also reduces the cooldown by one second giving you an 8 second A compared to a, a 40 second cooldown on a maxed C. How often are you going to be using C in a team fight? Probably once. How often will you be able to get off A in a team fight? Once, twice, maybe even three times. So I often think that this is actually a better way to go about it because especially as weapon power grump jaw, you need that gap closing ability that the A provides you and it actually gives you a net damage increase and you're more likely to use it more than once in a team fight. 
In terms of weapon power builds for Grumpjaw, I think that the the optimal build path is starting off with the very classic weapon power build of the Weapon Blade, the Swift Shooter, and the Halcyon Potion. This synergizes really nicely with his B ability early on. Um, you have a little bit of extra attack speed to help clear the jungle when your B ability is on cooldown. And obviously the bonus attack speed that you get will benefit from the attack speed that you get from Swift Shooter 2. So that's perfectly acceptable uh, starting build path for weapon power grump jaw. However, when we get to the main build path, this is kind of the core that you'll want to build around. The Sorrow Blade, the Breaking Point, the Tyrant's Monocle. You'll have seen this on pretty much every weapon power melee carry in existence right now. And you build around that. Grumpjaw does really well and kind of needs the resistances to function. So you go into the Aegis, the Atlas Pauldrons, and then have the movement speed. Because the one thing that weapon power Grumpjaw does struggle with... Is having consistent movement speed. You really, really need that to function properly in a team fight. Because once you've used your A ability, you don't have a movement speed steroid like Ringo does on his Twirling Silver. So you need to be able to um, get around very easily. Now, you can obviously go a little bit more aggressive and you can switch out the Atlas Pauldrons and pick up something like another Tyrant's Monocle. I feel that this makes you too susceptible to damage, however. And because of the fact that you can get kited very easily, you often won't get the full of benefit out of having two Tyrant's Monocles. So yeah, I think don't think I like this as much as having the Atlas Pauldrons. Definitely think like the defense is super necessary for um, for Grump Jaw. You could obviously also switch that out for a Bone Saw if you're facing lots of armor. And I often find at the very high levels, Grump Jaw does struggle with energy. So it is nice to have the Halcyon Chargers sometimes if you feel like you're using your energy far too readily. But to be honest, as Weapon Power Grump Jaw, you're probably not going to use your energy as much as you would do in a Crystal Power Grump Jaw. So it's probably better to stick with the movement speed which is what grump jaw actually struggles with quite heavily and finally something that uh one of my youtube commenters mentioned on my last video why not consider a shiver steel um a shiver steel instead of maybe another defensive item or obviously you can replace the tyrant's monocle for it if you really want those atlas pauldrons and actually i think this could work quite well for weapon power grump jaw because one of the main things that he does struggle with is sticking to his target because he doesn't have a movement speed buff so by adding the shiver steel uh, especially if you pick it up early, you already have the weapon power buff from your B. You don't necessarily need the extra weapon power damage, and you can pick a Shiver Steel up early, and it can probably be super influential in helping you lock down key targets, especially with your ultimate as well. So I think a Shiver Steel is a really good addition to his kit, and thank you, kind YouTube commenter, for letting me know. I also said I'd talk about the captain implications for Grump Jaw. And I don't want to spend too long on this because it's going to take up a long section of the guide. And if anyone's interested, I might do a whole guide on it separately. But Grumpjaw definitely can be played captain. He's got utility built into his kit. He's got a slow. He can peel to some respect. And his ultimate makes him a very viable target for the captain role. You know, you have a singular uh, isolating ability which can lock down a carry. The problem is that if they reflex block it, suddenly you're pretty useless and all you're going to be doing is soaking damage as best as possible. And most of Grumpjaw's kit is built to deal damage. It's not like Catherine or Lance who have more utility built in than anything. So Grumpjaw can be played captain, but I wouldn't recommend it over a damage build just because really takes away from what his kit is supposed to do. But if you would like to play him Captain, he's perfectly viable. Fountain, Crucible, War Treads, uh, Atlas Pauldrons, the usual types of build for uh, Captain are perfectly fine here. And the reason that we kind of don't really follow up on this Captain idea is because there are just other heroes that do it better and you wouldn't likely pick them over Grumpjaw because they just offer more as a Captain hero as a whole compared to what Grumpjaw offers in that Captain role. Now we're going to move on to tips and tricks for Grumpjaw, and I've only been playing him a short while, obviously, as he was released yesterday. I did get to manage to play him on the PBE a bit, and I've kind of got a hang of certain parts of his kit, which I thought I'd pass on to you guys. First of which, which is going to seem obvious to a lot of you, is Grumpjaw can use his A ability to cross walls. Now, this can be a little bit tricky, as long as you're giving Grumpjaw enough space to get his entire model over the wall, and then land before the point that you clicked and get his swing off, he will be able to cover it with good distance. So, think of it a little bit like a Lance roll. Anything that Lance can roll over, Grumpjaw can usually get over. However, he will come into trouble when he tries to cross walls and there isn't enough space for him to end up on the other side. So things like the uh, the Kraken Pit on certain areas of that, certain walls in the jungle, if you can't use your A ability and get Grumpjaw all the way over, you can't cross that wall. 
And you'll see here several examples of walls that you can and can't get over. You, you have to leave yourself a sizable distance in the ring for Grumpjaw to be effectively make it over the wall. But he can cross most walls, walls that most other heroes can cross with their abilities too. And he shouldn't have too much issue in the most cases. It's just when you don't give him enough space on the other side of the wall to get his entire model across. That's where Grumpjaw cannot end up passing over a wall. There are lots of ways to use Grumpjaw's ultimate, which is the next thing that I'm going to talk about. The first of which is using it to isolate something like a captain. Now this works if you've got good burst on your team, especially if you're CP Grumpjaw. You can then burst down the carries without having the annoyance of a fountain or a crucible to stop you. And you saw in this team fight, we deleted the rhyme and the Ringo, and Catherine could do nothing about it because she couldn't use her abilities or her items because she was stuck in the ultimate and that meant that we could then clean up and then clean her up afterwards. The next implication for the Grumpjaw ultimate is obviously the probably the one that everyone will go for is trying to isolate a carry in particular. So you can do this on high high sort of priority targets like a Rhyme and like a Ringo. You can then use it to try and reposition them into extra CC or just try and use it to burst them out completely. In this clip I just try and delete the Rhyme before he has any impact and then I try to place him in the Finn quibble but didn't quite get the end of the mark there. So if you're better than me you'll be able to replace them into to things like CC. Also in this situation you'll see I completely burst the Ringo and then use the Rhyme, uh, ultimate on the Rhyme, to allow my team just to try and do as much damage to Catherine as possible. I then put Rhyme within shooting range of Vox, although if Rhyme had been smarter he might have turned around and tried to kill the Vox. But you see in this situation we were then able to blow Rhyme up and he was on the defensive because I'd been so aggressive with my ultimate. The other implication for the Grumpjaw ultimate is obviously uh, chasing down kills and you can see in this situation I use it to just basically blow that rhyme up uh, and make sure he can't escape after they had tried to take a turret from us so it's a really good chase down tool as well because of the gap closing ability that also worth knowing how Grumpjaw's A ability works when you tap within the circle to cast it the area that you tap is where Grumpjaw will stop and swing his tusks it's not where he will end up as a model it's where the damage will be dealt so make sure you take that into account when aiming and trying to catch enemy heroes now usually at this point I would do things like hero matchups but I thought for a change we'd look at strengths and weaknesses of Grumpjaw in both the CP and weapon power builds. Now the CP strengths lie in the, hu the huge burst damage, the really good single target lockdown. If you hit your abilities and you lock down one particular member of the enemy team, you can almost one shot them with comboing between A and C as well as getting aftershock procs in. You're more durable than most other CP melee carries, so you know with your passive you can build a little bit more aggressive early on, don't need to invest into early armor and shielding like an alpha would for instance, and your B ability allows for some sustained damage while waiting for cooldowns. The weaknesses, however, are is that it's very skill shot dependent. If you miss your A and you miss your C, you will do no damage. You have to hit your A and you have to hit your C. And they can actually be quite hard to hit because they are very clunky skill shots to land. Because of the way that A works, it can be very difficult to land it properly and even get the damage onto the target that you want to. C is a little less clunky but still can be missed and you have to be very careful when aiming it. Another problem with Grump Jaw is that he's very all in. When you commit with your A, it's very hard to disengage. So that if you go in, you can often be suspect to the damage coming from the enemy team. And if you don't manage to land your damage, you're kind of dead in the water. So you have to be very sure about when you commit with the Grump Jaw, a little bit like an alpha. Because once you've committed, you're kind of in the fight and it's very difficult to get out of it. A lot of the weaknesses and strengths of Grump Jaw are kind of similar between the Weapon Power and Crystal Power build paths, but I thought I'd go over some of the differences in general. Weapon Power is not a skill shot dependent, so you can use your A to gap close, you don't necessarily need to land it. The slow is fantastic, but as long as it gets you into auto attack range, you can actually use it just to close distances. Got really high sustain damage with the use of B, and actually with the Weapon Power bonus and also the Attack Speed bonus, it gives you quite high burst damage as well, as long as you're landing all of your basic attacks in that small window of opportunity and has really good jungle clear and objective control with b you can actually clear kraken really quickly you can clear gold mine really quickly so very very good at taking objectives very good at taking turrets for instance so if you get close to a turret and you've got your sorrow blade you can actually start to shove them down very very quickly because of how good your b ability is with weapon power 
but it does have its weaknesses. He's very easily kited. This is the same for crystal power to an extent, but it is way more apparent in weapon power because you need to be within auto attack range to land your damage. You will struggle versus slows and hard CC to land any damage whatsoever. And the gap closer that you have is actually very weak compared to the likes of Glaive and Cruel. It's slow, it's easy pr to predict, it's kind of one directional and one and only has one dynamic to it. So it, I, I don't think it's a great gap closer in the sort of the, the grand scheme of things. And also, you don't have any movement speed buffs, so you'll be very, very hard-pressed to land your damage in a teamfight. I mean, that's what I talked about earlier, getting kited. And if I'm completely honest, I think there are just better versions of Weapon Power Grumpjaw. I mean, if I was going to pick Grumpjaw, I might just pick a Glaive or a Cruel instead and feel like I have a better version of Grumpjaw in the Weapon Power build path. Anyway, this is my first initial impressions and guide to Grump Jaw. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I think this will probably change over the course of the next month or so once people kind of really figure out what's good for him. But I thought this was a good place to start in terms of his tips and tricks and abilities. I'll probably re-release as I go on um, and probably redo this guide later on once he's kind of settled in the meta. But I thought for everyone wondering how to play him and wondering where to start, this would be a good place to get you guys on the road. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to be releasing a VOD and Taka Guide due to popular demand next, so I'll be working on those ASAP, but for the meantime, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.